Our task with Lecture 36.1 is to write net acid-base reactions. Whenever possible, I give students a stepwise approach. Here is our general approach for writing aqueous net acid-base reactions. Step one is write down the main species in solution. So for ionic salts that are soluble, we're going to write the cation and the anion. An example is potassium sulfate. This would separate into potassium ion and sulfate anion. Remember our six strong acids when in aqueous solution produce hydronium and the conjugate base. An example would be perchloric acid. An aqueous solution of perchloric acid contains hydronium and perchlorate because strong acids completely dissociate in water. That would be these six strong acids at the upper left of the acid base table. The strongest acid that can exist in water is hydronium. For the weak acids in water, we simply write the weak acid. Let me show you on the acid base table. This would be all the acids highlighted in green. These are weak acids and therefore the proton remains attached in aqueous solution for most of the material present in solution. So if you are given acetic acid, that is what you write down, HC2H3O2. For super strong bases, write down hydroxide and the conjugate acid. For example, if I gave you NH21 minus, this also completely reacts with water to make hydroxide and the conjugate base. Strong bases completely react with water, and the strongest base possible in water is hydroxide. So for example, here is NH2 on the acid base chart. You notice that it's below the line, just like the strong acids completely dissociate in water to make hydronium, the super strong bases completely react with water to make hydroxide and their conjugate base. And finally, for our weaker bases, we're going to write the weak base and the counter ion. You may notice that most of the weak bases have an anionic or negative charge to them, and they come with a cation. So this really is the initial rule where we're going to separate ionic compounds into their cation and their anion. As you can see, the majority of weak bases are anions, and the exception is, of course, NH3. These will be given to students as ionic salts, and so we're going to separate the cation from the anion. Step two, we decide if the species can act as an acid or a base, and we eliminate the spectator ions. So spectator ions would be not an acid or base on the chart, or the conjugate base of a strong acid. I'll explain further as we go along. To write our net reaction, we're going to write the strongest acid and strongest base on the reactant side of the equation. We're going to write the conjugate base and conjugate acid on the product side of the equation, and then we will calculate the equilibrium constant. This would be the Ka of the reacting acid over the Ka of the produced acid. And if our equilibrium constant is greater than 1,000, we will use an arrow to the right. Or if it's an equilibrium, which means the equilibrium constant is less than 1,000, we'll use an equilibrium arrow. So here's an example, H2S and NaOH. Here is H2S on the acid base table. You notice it's in the region of weak acids. So for step one, H2S is a weak acid, so we're going to write it down as it is. Most of the species in solution is H2S. NaOH is a soluble ionic salt. So we're gonna separate the cation and anion in aqueous solution. So what does this give us? 
three species floating around in solution, H2S, sodium ion, and hydroxide ion. Step two, decide which is our acid and which is our base. Sodium ion is a spectator. You're not going to find it on the acid base table. H2S is going to be our acid, and hydroxide is going to be our base. So step three, we'll write down our acid and our base. Now we need to come up with our conjugates. We're going to deprotonate H2S, so that will give us our conjugate base, and we're going to protonate hydroxide, so that will give us H2O, the conjugate acid. The last thing we need to do is decide upon the arrow. So our equilibrium constant will be the Ka of H2S, that's our reacting acid, over the Ka of H2O. That is our produced acid. So we're going to get these values from the table. So we see that our reacting acid has a value of 1 times 10 to the minus 7, and our produced acid, water, has a value of 1 times 10 to the minus 14. So when we substitute those values, our equilibrium constant is 1 times 10 to the 7th, which is a huge number. So we're going to use a reaction arrow to the right for this net acid-base reaction. Let's try another one, ammonium chloride and sodium sulfite. Ammonium chloride is a soluble ionic salt, so we'll separate it into ammonium ion and chloride ion. Sodium sulfite is another soluble ionic salt, so we'll separate it into sodium ion and sulfite ion. If we think about what is floating in solution, there are four species floating in solution that might react. Step two is to assign the acid and the base. We know sodium ion is not going to be on the acid base table. Chloride ion is also going to be a spectator ion. I'll explain further in a moment. So our acid is going to be ammonium and our base is going to be sulfite. So step three, we write down our acid and our base. Step four is to write our conjugates. So ammonium loses a proton to become ammonia, and sulfite gains a proton to become hydrogen sulfite. Now we need to determine the equilibrium constant. This is going to be the Ka of the reacting acid, which is the ammonium, over the Ka of the produced acid, which is hydrogen sulfite. So let's check out our table. Our reacting acid has a Ka of 5.6 times 10 to the minus 10, and our produced acid has a Ka of 1 times 10 to the minus 7. So when we place that in the formula, we wind up with an equilibrium constant of 5.6 times 10 to the minus 3. Not a terribly good reaction. So we're going to use an equilibrium arrow for this net reaction. Now I need to explain to you why chloride is not going to be our reacting base. Why is chloride a spectator? Well, let's think about chloride reacting with water to make conjugate acid and conjugate base. If chloride is our base and water is our acid, we'll wind up with HCl as our conjugate acid, and a hydroxide as our conjugate base. So if we want the equilibrium constant for this, this will be Ka of reacting acid, which is our water, and Ka of our produced acid, which is HCl. The Ka of our reacting acid, water, is 1 times 10 to the minus 14. The Ka of our produced acid is so large it's undetermined in water. I've chosen a value of 10 to the 9th, which is the value in methanol, which might approximate the Ka value in water. So if we use 10 to the 9th, our equilibrium constant for this reaction is 1 times 10 to the minus 23rd. Clearly, this is quite a terrible forward reaction. So chloride and water exist in solution without very much product at all. So this is why we consider chloride a spectator. It's the conjugate base of a strong acid. So if we look on the table, 
Strong bases, which completely react with water to make hydroxide, are in the lower right. Your average bases are between the lines, and your incredibly weak bases, which are actually spectator ions, are above the line and to the right. The exception is hydrogen sulfate. It is not a very good base, but it can still act as an acid. Another way to think of this is to suggest which one is the stronger base that would react with ammonium. Sulfite is a much stronger base than chloride will be. How about another example, HCl and potassium carbonate? HCl is a strong acid. So if we have an aqueous solution of HCl, what we really have is hydronium and chloride. Potassium carbonate is a soluble ionic salt, so we'll have potassium ion and carbonate ion. What does this give us in solution? These four species floating about. So we need to decide which is our acid and which is our base. Potassium ion is not on the acid base table, and chloride is the conjugate base of a strong acid. So it will be a much weaker base than anything else we might have in solution. Our acid needs a proton, so that must be hydronium, leaving carbonate to be our base. So step three is, of course, write down our acid and our base. Step four is write down the conjugates. So hydronium becomes deprotonated to make water, and carbonate becomes protonated to make hydrogen carbonate. Our last job is to get the Ka value. So we have our reacting acid, which is hydronium, and our produced acid, which is hydrogen carbonate. So this would be Ka of reacting acid over Ka of produced acid. So let me just show you that I took these values from the table. You can see that we have a Ka of 1 for hydronium and 4.7 times 10 to the minus 11 for hydrogen carbonate. I've put in these values. You notice we have a very large number for our equilibrium constant, so we should use an arrow to the right for this reaction to indicate that the majority of the material is product. So here is your question regarding an acid-base reaction. I've given it to you in words, but I'll help you out a little bit. Carbonic acid is H2CO3, and sodium sulfide is Na2S. So please go through the steps and use your acid base table to decide which of these is the net reaction. And of course, pay attention to the arrows and make sure you choose the correct arrow, either an arrow to the right or an equilibrium arrow. Here's another one. Sodium acetate is mixed with hydrochloric acid. Both of these are in aqueous solution before we mix the two aqueous solutions. I've written out the formulas for you, but maybe you want to keep in mind that hydrochloric acid is a strong acid in aqueous solution. How about an aqueous solution of sodium acetate? That means we have sodium acetate in water. And last question, calculate the value of Ka for this reaction. You're going to have to decide which one is the acid and which one is the base. Remember that for purposes of calculation, the reacting acid loses a proton and the produced acid or conjugate acid will gain a proton.